Hey y'all, thanks so much for coming back and checking out another one of my videos. Today we're doing a casual kitty get ready with me and we're trying out a brand new palette, literally just arrived yesterday. This is the new Endanger Cosmetics Sea Turtle Palette. This is the beautiful packaging that it comes in. Their little logo is like reflective, so very beautiful. And then you open it up by sliding it out and then there's a picture of these two beautiful sea turtles on the cover. Again, the sea turtles are reflective. The kind of water around it is more matte, so it gives a really, really neat effect and I didn't know this but they included cards which I think is so very neat I purchased this myself but in my purchase were these little things uh, this is a little magnet of one of the turtles I believe it's the green sea turtle and then she also included two cards one of the green sea turtle and the hawksbill sea turtle which are on the cover of the actual palette and it's really cool because she put little information on the back so the green sea turtle the type is a reptile habitat is tropical and subtropical ocean diet is herbivore and status is endangered and then for the hawksbill sea turtle the it is a reptile, the habitat is a tropical coral reefs, diet is an omnivore, and the status is critically endangered. And she also included on the back of these cards and saying, with every purchase, you are helping the sea turtle conservancy, conservancy sorry, I always struggle with that word, um, conservancy project, the hawksbill turtles and their habitat in the Caribbean. So I think that is so very neat that she included that little extra touch because her brand is all about endangered animals. It's called Endangered Cosmetics. So I love that she added that little touch. Also too, I wanted to point out that it was wrapped really nicely. I know it doesn't look that nice now, but she folded it so beautiful has this little e little uh, sticker type thing put on it and it was just wrapped so very perfectly so attention in the detail it's the same thing I noticed when I purchased her first palette this is a second palette that she has launched but I really do appreciate the attention to detail but anyway this is the sea turtle palette and here is what the inside looks like now I did use it this morning I had to run out with the kids this morning and so I did my makeup with these two browns this gold over here as well as this one and I really liked how the look turned out I had no issues blending was very happy with how everything ended up looking and whatnot so I'm excited to dive into the more blues and greens right now so let's go ahead and I'm gonna prime my eyes I did take off my makeup I've been wearing this makeup all day I was out with my kids we'll talk a little bit about what we we're doing but I also went to the park with them after our little excursion so I was sweating a lot because it's in Florida in September and it's like 100 degrees out so my makeup may look a little rough but that's going to be why I touched it up as best I could but I'm not the best when it comes to fixing my makeup but anyway let's go ahead and jump right into doing our makeup together and trying out the sea turtle palette together on camera So I primed with the ABH primer and now I did leave my mascara on so I feel like that's going to probably screw me up but I didn't feel like taking it off because I feel like then I would ruin more of my makeup trying to remove my mascara so I left it on. We'll see how much I regret that later but let's go ahead and jump right into it. I think I'm going to do this on the outer corner blending this kind of up and into my crease. I might even take this to soften out this shade so it doesn't get too dark. I don't know if we'll see how dark that is. I want to use these two on my lid I know for sure. Maybe a touch of that green. But well, let's go ahead and jump in. I'm going to dive into that blue. I don't think there's any names. No, no names on the back. I did, when I reviewed their first palette, the Red Panda palette, I had noticed in my first impressions, I think I did my crease and then I was doing my outer corner and I noticed an issue with blending and I found with her formula I just have an easier time if I kind of work from darkest to light. So that's what I did this morning when I did my eyes with the browns and I had no issues and no problems blending it at all. So that's what I'm going to do for this look today since it worked well with her previous palette. But I figured I would throw it out there in case you did try her, her red panda palette and maybe you didn't have a uh, you know, good experience with the darker shadows. I forget which shade specifically I had issues with patching in my first video. I'll leave that video linked up here if you wanna see, but I figured I would throw it out there in case you experience it too. Um, I found that just switching around, working from dark to light solved any kind of issues I had with that palette, and I really did enjoy that palette. I ended up really loving it. So now I'm gonna move on to that next shadow, a little bit big. I'm really starting to gear towards some smaller, more detailed brushes. I've really been enjoying I think I'm going to take this. This is the E25 brush and I'm going to go into that shade right here. So yeah, honestly, I'm kind of surprised that I was, I'm like sitting down to film because I really didn't think I'd be able to film and it was not stressing me out, but I was definitely kind of worried about it because <laughs> yesterday was Labor Day. So my husband was home. I didn't film. And then tomorrow I'm actually going to go to my mom's for the day. So I won't get a chance to film. And then I have another appointment. I got to take my car in on Thursday. So I'll get to film. So I was like, man, I really wanted to be able to film with this to put up on Thursday, but like, I'm not going to be home. But anyway, it worked out that we came home. So today I took my kids to a local like homeschool day, a day where people who homeschool their kids will get together. And we kind of signed up to 
collectively come together and teach as almost like a group to teach uh, the kids certain subjects kind of like extracurricular more group things and whatnot uh, we come together and a couple of the ladies will teach and then we'll all kind of help watch over and teach the kids and I, I'm just starting this year because Olivia is in kindergarten but I've really been enjoying it but that's where I was today so it's just a morning thing and we were done at lunchtime and then uh, my sister does the same thing she also homeschools her kids so we decided we thought it was a great idea to take them to the park and let them run around after after the day together or the morning together and oh my goodness it was so hot after about like 45 minutes we're like are you ready to go home yeah I'm ready to go home it was hot but the kids had so much fun at this park it's a really big park that I remember going to when I was a kid like literally probably well when did we move here probably like eight years old I remember we first discovered it or it was first built and it's just they've added on to it they've built it up so oh, it was so neat to go because it was like so many memories very nostalgic for me watching my kids run around there because I remember when I was tiny enough to run around and climb into those things too and now it's just like oh we're not getting into that Katie. But anyway so it was a fun morning it was just a very busy morning and then we came home and I got all the kids in bed one of them is not asleep but he is in his bed so I'm hoping he'll go to sleep he uh, kind of dozed off in the car on the way home which is always like ugh. My kids don't transition well, so I was like, oh, I don't know if you're gonna actually sleep when we get home. But we're trying, he's chilling in there, relaxing, so I'm hoping he'll drift off to sleep. But yeah, it's been a lot of fun to do the homeschool thing in the morning um, with the kids, and we do it all as a, a group. You know, we break up because there are several, a lot of homeschool families that get together for this, so we can't do one big group. But we break it up, and I think there's like, in my kids' class, Olivia and Gideon does it too, um, there's I think six or seven other kids with their parents in there and whatnot, and so it's a lot of fun. A, way, a fun way for them to get together with other kids their age and get to learn kind of on the same level with some other kids and they, they look forward to it so much. Olivia's having such a blast. Okay, so I'm gonna go into this shade right here. I'm gonna, oh, can I point this shade? I'm gonna use this as a softener, basically, and I wanna take it kind of deep into my crease here, or my inner crease, I don't even know what you call this. But I'm gonna just use it to soften it up and I'm gonna take it above as a softener and just to help uh, give me another color to kind of blend it out so it doesn't look too harsh. This is what I used to blend out the dark brown today and I really liked how that ended up turning out. So I wanna see what it looks like mixing with the greens. So far so good. The pigmentation, like, that, I mean, I could leave it like that, but I'm just wanting to use more and see what these do. But that pigmentation, I feel like it went on super easy. This shade that I'm using is definitely a, a very, a much more sheer color. I feel like I'm using the wrong brush for it. I need something a little more dense to really pack it on. Something like this. This is the E27. It just is more of like a blending brush, but it has a point to it or like a more a pointed nest to it. So I feel like it blends it out faster than a big fluffy brush. Okay, so now that we have that, I'm gonna move on to my lid. And you guys know me, I always like to use the glitter glue. I just feel like A, it's easier to get the shimmer kind of adhere and stick on, but B, I feel like it also too does help with the lasting power and whatnot. And it's just habit at this point. If I could find out where I put my glitter glue, oh, I left it on the table from this morning. I just used the glitter primer from NYX. I feel like it's a great, Great product. It's, it gives you the nice amount of tack, not too much like coverage, so you don't have to worry about making sure it's blended out, you know, perfectly and evenly. You can just tap it on, let it sit a moment, and it gets it nice and tacky. As I said, I think I'm gonna just keep it easy and do this on the inner half, this on the outer half, because I, I feel like I tend to do that sort of thing, and I really like how that looks. So that's what we're going to do, and then maybe I'll just use the gold on the inner corner or something. I don't know what I'll use for my highlight, but anyway. So yeah, that's what I, I feel like I've just been running all morning. So I honestly haven't put much thought into what I wanted to chat with you guys about in this video, but that's what I'm doing once a week now with my kids. I feel like I've been running around all morning, you know, I you know, woke up, got ready and then I had to pack for the kids, do lunch and whatnot so that we could leave because the the homeschool day starts at nine. So we have to get out of the house kinda early and then you know, we did that, then we went to the park, then we came home, fed the kids, put them to bed. So I just feel like I've been go, go, going. So honestly, I haven't put much thought into what I wanted to chat about. Hence why I'm rambling on and on, on about what I did with the kids, but sorry if you find that boring. This is my first year doing homeschool. I was homeschooled, I've mentioned before, um, my whole school, years um, by my mom but Olivia is officially in kindergarten this this uh, this year so we are doing homeschool so we do that once a week and then at home 
Uh, I do a little something with her every day, you know, Monday through Friday, not every day of the week. So I do a little something with her every day. I'm gonna go in with the green, and Gideon actually loves to sit with us too, so I, I have stuff for him that's simpler and whatnot, but he is pretty darn attentive. I'm honestly surprised, because I was anticipating only really focusing and teaching on Olivia and letting Levi and Gideon play, but anytime I talk about, okay, you know, let's sit down and do some school, like he is right there at the table with us wanting to do it, so we're learning, he's learning a lot, and I figured it can't hurt to get some, you know, basics down early. So he's learning to listening in on Olivia's lessons, but then also to learning some on his own. I have little books for him, like pre-K stuff that he does and works on. And he really loves it, which I am surprised because he's definitely a very, you know, he likes to play. He's like all boy in his personality. So I was anticipating him definitely not being down to sitting down doing school. But so far we're, what, two, three weeks into homeschooling uh, since, you know, the, the, the school year started for us over here in Florida. And he is still very studious with me. So yeah, it's been good. I've really been enjoying it. It's definitely making me like... Re having, re having to really think through my days because before, you know, having no one in school was like, oh, we can just do whatever, go with the flow. If we want to, you know, got to run errands, we can just go out whenever, whenever it works and whatnot. But now that I need to make sure I fit in some school every day, it's like, okay, I got to think about this a little bit longer. Okay, I'm going to pop off screen and just put on some black liquid liner because I think that'll go really pretty with this look. And then we'll jump back on and finish out this look. Okay, so I am back. I have, is that flat? No, that's just mascara fall, not shadow. Um, So I went ahead and did my liner and I put on a little bit more mascara to hopefully help if I'm looking too rough because I don't like that look when the shadow falls into my to my lashes and then I don't cover it up. But anyway, I forgot to mention before I, you know, stopped to do that, but the shimmers are pretty. They went on super smooth, but I'm a little... A little upset that there's not more of a difference between the blue and the green because putting it on I almost feel like I have one shadow on my lid and I, there are, there is a difference I'm not gonna say there isn't a difference at all but it is an extremely subtle difference between one shade and the other and in the pan it looks a lot more evident at least I thought it did or I think it does in person but using it on my lid maybe I'll tap on some more of the green to really help it stand out but definitely not as much so I think in future Instead of mixing these two into a look, I would definitely just use one, probably like the green on the lid, and then save the blue for the inner corner. And maybe it would pop a little bit different, or a little bit more and whatnot. Maybe I should have used the uh, the um, the gold and, you know, one of the blue or the green instead of the two greens. Like, that would have been pretty. I'll have to do that in a look. Even that would be really pretty too. But anyway, um, that's my only kind of critique with it, is I definitely feel like it's just not very... Not very different. Okay, so we're gonna move to the lower lash line and I'm going to take that dark blue and I'm gonna be putting that right into my lower lashes, uh, right against it. This is gonna be pretty. Or should I use the, there's a green there. Let's do that. So I'm gonna, I was just gonna use the same two mattes that I used above, but I'm gonna put a little bit of green here or a little bit of blue. I can't talk. You know how many times I edit and I mean one thing, but I say the different thing and I'm like, Katie, you didn't say it right. And then I have to put over the screen what I meant to say. Not infrequent, I will tell you that. And then I'm gonna take a very packing brush, a packing type of smudger brush. This is the BMX 402 from uh, Moda Brushes. I'm gonna take this dark green and I'm going to put that, I'm probably gonna use just this all on the lower lashes, but I didn't think about it until I already started putting the blue. So we're gonna mix the two together. Yeah, this shimmer doesn't look too like sparkly flaky. It looks like more of a, a smooth pigmented type of shimmer. So it should work really well down here. I'm just gonna go over the blue, I think. I don't even know if you guys will be able to see very well on camera, but I can see, I can see it in person. It's definitely a very pigmented color. Doesn't have a whole lot of shine. It's almost like, I won't call it satin. It definitely has a little bit more intensity to it than a satin, but it's a pretty subtle shimmer. So it's definitely a shade that I would only use like on the outer corner to kind of blend it into some mattes because it, it doesn't have enough impact and it is a dark shadow to put on my, um, like in on my lid or on my inner corner, that type of thing. Okay, I'm going to take, let's go with this shade, which I used for my crease and I'm going to use it without any shadow right now. I'm gonna use it to kind of blend because I don't like how dark this is. I'm gonna to touch a little bit to it. Didn't know if I wanted too much color on it, but I think this will be a good shadow to use to do some blending and diffusing. Hopefully it won't be too dark. 
That is something to note with this is there isn't a whole lot of very light or transition-y type of colors. There's just like really colorful and then this very light peach, which I did use that to do a transition for when I did a very neutral shade or, shade or look this morning and it worked really well. But for this more colorful look, I feel like I need color to transition it. So I'm just using, I'm going in very lightly to that shadow that I used in my crease. And so far I am liking how it's looking. It's not too harsh and it's definitely working to kind of soften. I'm getting sloppy here and connect the lower and top of my eye together. I got a little messy here. I'm always messy when it comes to finishing off my eye look. I just, the one, the one aspect that I really do need to work on when it comes to my eye looks because I always feel like in pictures and then just in everyday life right here, it looks a little rough. But I think I'm just a heavy-handed and patient person. So instead of like all the professional and talented makeup artists who share their pictures on Instagram and YouTube and whatnot, they're very light and very gentle with their hands and whatnot. And I'm just always like in a hurry and heavy-handed. I'm just like, put it on quick. I'm going to take a black in my waterline. Actually, you know what? Let's do this. I don't know how well it'll go. This is Zulu. I don't know how well it'll work. This is from ColourPop, but it's definitely kind of a, it's like a lighter version of what's going on on top. It's like a sky blue, I guess. I know it feels like I'm being really rough. I'm being gentle and pulling down my, uh, my skin, but I will tell you that it's so hard to get the ColourPop to transfer because it dries out so much. I can put it on my eye, my uh, arm, no problem, but putting it on my eye is a different story. Okay, so now let's go ahead and do my inner corner and then I'll put some mascara on my lower lashes. I'm going to take the gold and the gold is definitely pigmented, so I don't know how well this will work because it's not like a sheer wash of color. It's like gold, so I'm going to very gently, very delicately tap this over. Hopefully without making a mess, but also like I don't want it to be too intense because then it's just going to take forever to kind of blend and soften it up because I don't think it'll look good to have like a super pigmented gold in the corner. I want it more of a wash of gold. Yeah, like that. I think that'll do. I tell you, I love little sponge tip applicators for applying my inner corner. It makes it go on so much more pigmented, so much more quicker. Like I feel like I had, I would always be so careful and spend so long packing it on with other brushes. Okay, so let me do some mascara and then we'll be all done. All right, I am all done. I just realized I don't think I put on any highlighter this morning, so I'm just gonna take some of this Super Glow from Natasha Denona while I throw up some close-ups so you guys can see what this makeup looks like up close, just really as much as I can show you of how this look turned out. I am super duper pleased with the final, final look. I feel like the mattes were super easy to blend. They were very nice to work with. The blue and the green had absolutely no complaints about them. The more like lighter tone kind of my skin tone but probably a little lighter I don't know that beigey tone in there um, was definitely a little light and maybe because it's so light it was a bit transparent so it didn't pack a whole lot of punch in the way of color when I was using it to blend but it did do the purposes that I wanted it for which was to soften out the blue I felt like it did that really well but it definitely was a color that's just so close to my skin tone it kind of bled into it and it was hard to see but anyway moving on to the shimmers I was super happy with the pigmentation how easy it was to apply and the amount of kind of sparkle it's definitely nothing metallic and it's nothing with extra sparkly reflex in it. It's just a very nice pigmented shimmer, which I appreciate and I really do like. I will say though that I probably won't be the biggest fan of the green because it is such a soft shimmer. And then as I already said, I am a little disappointed with how close these two colors are just because, you know, this is a nine pan palette. So the more looks, the more different type of looks I can get out of it, the happier I am. And seeing how close those two are together, I feel like, I don't know, I don't know how different I'm going to be able to get the looks or, you know, how creative I'll be able to get the looks because I feel like in all all the pictures is going to look a little bit repetitive because the green and the blue you know almost at least in this look I feel like could be mistaken for each other I have some glitter up here I have no idea how I got glitter but it's up there so let me take it away um but yeah besides that I am super happy with the shimmers you know besides the fact that those two are super close I had absolutely no complaints with the shimmers I used all of them I guess at this point I used the brown this morning the green on my lower lash line the, this brown is very similar to the green except I feel like this has a little bit more intensity a little bit more like shimmer to it than the green does but I've used every shadow at least once at this point and I am super happy I never had any issues with any of them looking like they were gonna patch or skip or fade at all 
all throughout the day. I used two of the mattes and two of the shimmers and I was sweating so hard for about an hour or two and there was no creasing, there was no fading with any of the shimmers or the mattes. So that is a little bit of a wear test, but nothing too crazy. I'll continue to try it out and we'll definitely come back with a review, but I wanted to sit down and do this first impressions video with you guys so you guys could see since this is a newer palette that just launched and I just got it in my hands. I wanted to let you guys know my first initial thoughts on it. So yeah, that is gonna do it for today's video. Thank you guys so very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you guys enjoyed getting introduced to this brand. As I said, they've only released one other palette, the Red Panda palette, and then this is their second one. I cannot wait to continue watching and seeing where this brand goes because so far, both palettes have caught my eye, caught my heart, and you know, even though Red Panda being more of a neutral palette, I really enjoyed the type of looks that I got. I really like that type of neutral color story. And then this is just so fun with that mix of neutral greens and blues. I thought she did a great job with the color story. So yeah, if you want to continue getting daily content from me, I'm over on Instagram. I'm Lady Katie 92 over there. And with all that said, that is going to do it for today's video. And I will see you guys very soon in my next one. Bye guys.